Hi guys, Devin here. So, we're just going to do a quick top 10 video. Top 10 Zephyr cards of all time. So, this is current format, past format. Just thought it would be a little bit of fun. Some easy content. Got to love your top 10 lists. So, these are going to be cards that are banned, cards that are currently legal, cards that we might not necessarily be playing now, but cards that can fade in and out of the format. So, give you an idea of what we've played in the past, what might come back. And yeah, just just a little bit of fun. So before we get into that, just going to mention that Musa might be going on holiday for a month, and I might be taking a little break. If that does happen, uploads will continue. Might be a bit slower. And if I do end up taking a break or I leave, then videos will be replaced with replays with music in the background until Musa can start doing commentary, and then. Whether I come back to do commentary or not depends. At the moment, there's nothing set in stone. I'll probably continue to do a few more videos and see how I'm feeling. Musa will be gone for a month, so upload schedule might be a bit slower. Might start uh, pre-recording stuff. And yeah, so we're just going to get into the video now. So we're just going to start off with number 10 on the list is Cybersteam. Very solid card. It's a card that you can grab off of Ravenous Crocodragon. It can get you exterior. It can get you... Last Warrior. It can get you Kaligo if you want, but it does summon those targets in, in attack, so you've got to keep that in mind. And Kaligo's a very small boy, so... It's not as versatile as the other cards, that's why it's so low. And it's not as powerful, but it is a very good card. Exterior can just be a turn ender versus some decks, like versus Branded. Especially since they're starting to cut Super poorly from their main deck. Ninth on the list is Maxi. Maxi, we've not played with it much, wasn't around for long when Zephyr was released, unfortunately it's now banned, card was insane for this deck, a lot of control decks will say the card was insane but Zephyr could actually search this card and could easily play under it, your opponent would often drop, would have to drop Maxi when you scale two cards and so you could just choose not to pen summon or just pen summon one and you gave you pillars so you give them a draw one but you got two interruptions off it so it was definitely worth it so br please bring maxi back to one so that we can search it thanks for konami eighth on this list is pot of prosperity this card is insane for the deck very good support there are alternatives if you're a budget player you can run pot of extravagance you can run pot of desires you have to make a few deck building concessions and so far that those cards haven't really worked that well for me. I'd rather just play normal summons, so you can run normal summons like Medulture Package instead, or Pathfinders. But Pot of Prosperity is just insane because choosing the deck doesn't need all fifteen cards in the extra deck and can always banish six. If it, it fixes a lot of your hands. Going second you can search for a lot of board breakers. The 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 only confliction being that you can't draw, so you can't use this and use croc stack. There is a way of getting around that, where if you go uh, make a level 9 synchro, stack the top card of your deck, and then prosperity dig it, but at that point you might as well just croc stacked, unless you were going to make Shen Shen, which isn't very good this format, or Chao Feng. But generally, the card is very good, so run it if you have it. Next on the list is Metaphys Horus. This card's a staple if you're running the level 3s, and you should be running the level 3s and control Zephyr. Obviously, Combo Zephyr is not going to run this, but Control Zephyr should be. I'm going to explain this card very briefly because it's very confusing. If this card is Synchro Summoned, you activate the appropriate effects depending on the material used for it. So, if you used a normal monster, it's unaffected by card effects for this turn. If you use an effect monster, you can target one other face card on the field and negate that target's effects. This is a permanent negate. And then the other effect is if you used a Pendulum monster for its Synchro Summon. Your opponent chooses one monster they control and gives control of it to you. So if you used, generally we're making it with the Zephraxian a level 3, so generally we're using an effect monster and a pendulum monster, we're never using the normal monster effect. And we get to use both effects, and the cool thing is Horus chain blocks itself. So these effects activate in chain with each other, so you can go chain link 1, effect, opponent gives control, chain link 2, effect to negate something permanently. So this card's very good with clearing the board because you can steal an opponent's card, turn this or new and that opponent's card into Sheridan. So that way you've negated a card, taken a card, made Sheridan, sent another card. 
So it's like cleared a lot of bodies. Helps you get around towers that this deck sometimes has issues dealing with, or floaters. So next on the list is Electromite. I, I want to reiterate that this list is for Control Zephyr. Forgot to mention it at the start. Reason why that's important is Control Zephyr used Electromite. It was a very good card. However, the deck did not play Extenders to make this turn one very consistently. So it's a very good card. It helps with the grind game. It was really good, but you didn't make it turn one. It wasn't an combo enabler in this control build. In Pendulum Dot Deck Exe, with like pile Pendulum decks, Electromite is would 100% be number one on this list. But this is for Control Zephyr. Electromite's lower on the list than the other five cards I mentioned. So it's a very good card. Unfortunately, it's banned. Beyond does not replace it, unfortunately, because it the confliction with Zephyrath and that it returns Zephyrath scale to five regardless of what order you use the effects so that kind of sucks so it doesn't really replace electromite we have some other link twos we have the beyond we have alsa so it's not the end of the world but this was a very good card next on the list is planet pathfinder so this card is a very solid starter such as your field swell which searches any zephyr card and allows you to like use the secondary effects to croc stack. Croc stack is less effective when you've used your normal summon, but the reason why this is on the list is because in the past it's been used for stuff like Zexel. So when Zexel was legal what we would do is you'd croc stack into Pathfinder, you'd have searched Providence off new, and then Providence would then search uh, Path. You'd go normal Pathfinder, add Numeron Network, and then you'd activate path shuffling away your croc. Now you control no monsters. So now you can use network to summon Zexel. So you end on path Zexel. And if you end if you drew other stuff, you could also get a counter trap with this. So it was really strong. It still is a decent starter. And there's some other field spells that you can run and, and use. So there's like the generator field spell if you want to do some funky stuff with that. Therian has come out as a package you can run as like an anti hand trap package and run Pathfinder as a free of normal summon. So it's a very versatile card, such as you Mystic Mind, such as you Oracle, Therion, Disc Coliseum. So such as you a lot of cards. So. Next on the list is Exchange. So this is a really weird one, and it's been a staple in the side deck for a while, mainly for Musa and I. Musa came up with this, I believe, where it's not many decks can use this card. Basically how this card functions is both players reveal their hands and add one card from each other's hand to their hand. Very simple. The way you do this in Zephyr is if you drew your rotors, you would set, so for example you had Terraforming, you have Providence, you'd set those cards, Prosperity, you set those cards. Then you'd activate Exchange, give them like a dead scale. Usually there's one dead card in a Zephyr hand that you don't mind giving to them. You give them a driver. And then you can take an engine card or you can take a hand trap out of their hand. And hand knowledge is very important because then you can go, well, I know that he has this many outs to my back row. So actually I'll set up path plus providence because there's no point setting up counter traps because this many back row hates just going to force them out anyway. So I'll do path plus war. Or you can go, well, he's got all engine. I'll take the out. And I'll set up path path. So it's like hand knowledge is very important. It sets up your board. You know what to play around. And yeah, so there's so, so some cool interactions where like you take their monster and now you can like make <laughs> Sheridan with it because it's a monster owned by your opponent. So there's a lot of uses with this card. It's a very strong uh, side card going first. It can suck where if you don't draw very good with exchange, it's not like a D barry and then it's a turn skip. It requires you to draw playable for it to be really good, but. It is one Zephyr is one of the few decks that can actually abuse this card. So. Third on the list is Dimension Shifter. This card fades in and out of formats, but when it's good, it is fucking good. It is just a turn skip. It's it helps you versus like some hand traps as well because they can't Velo and they can't draw and they can't Ghost Ogre under it. So if you play three of this free gamma, you've got like six ways to deal with those hand traps. Well. Gambit doesn't deal with Vela, but this is just a turn skip. You can even croc stack draw it if you didn't send any cards to the grave that turn. So it's very it's a very just good power card that just solves the issue with the deck is that going second, the deck's engine isn't very good at clearing boards. But if you just stop them from making a board in the first place, then 
it doesn't really matter. So this just steals so many game ones where you like lose to die roll. It's just it might be coming back into the format with Splike and Terra Limits coming out. Um, and we have, it's been in and out of the format, in and out of the main and side, but it's always part of the main or side. If you're not playing it, you really should. Next we have Ravenous Crocodragon. So this card is the reason why Zephyr can play so many different one-of monsters. Stuff like Vanity's Fiend, Cyberstein, Pathfinder. It's the reason why we can make VFD, well we could make VFD, we could make loads of other floodgate monsters. It's because this card effectively searches any monster in the game, makes the deck very versatile to build. Whenever new cards come out we can always consider do we croc combo this in our deck. So generally we're making this with Zephranu and Zephraxi, so it usually if, if those aren't familiar with how the combo is, you synchro summon this with Oracle on field and you go chain link one croc to draw, chain link two oracle to stack. So you're gonna like, for example, we're playing Vanity's Fiend at the moment, so you're gonna stack Vanity's Fiend, draw it, and then you contribute some of Vanity's Fiend. In the past, you used to do stuff like stack and draw Gizmet Kaku to get the other level nine to make VFD. And when Denglong was legal, you'd go like search Diva, for example. So it was ver it's very versatile. Also, when Max C was legal, you could search Max C, which was just insane. So this card's always good because it just lets you raise the ceiling of the deck and the end board. So it's a staple, one of the best cards in Zephyr. We're going to move on to some honourable mentions. So first off is Denglong. Denglong was insane because you could run like a Diva package and it just made VFD search max C combos insane. There's like a combo with Oracle plus Diva that gets you a searched max C, a VFD. I think that's it. And if you open better, if you had a way to pen summon new, that was without pen summoning new. So if you pen summon new on top of that, you also got a counter trap to back that all up. Cards are nutty. Be nice if they bring it back. They probably shouldn't. But would be nutty for the deck. VFD. It's funny that this card's on here because we actually, when VFD was legal, we were actually summoning Zexel over it. We thought we'd mention it since we mentioned Pathfinder before. VFD was insane was a turn skip that could get to it very easily. And third on the list is Mystic Mine. Problem I said with the deck before is clearing bodies. Well, you don't have to deal with that if you just Mystic Mine stall for a push. Generally, people will set up a board of mostly monster interruptions and a few Omnis and Pops, and they'll use that Omnis and Pops on your scales. They usually won't let you pen summon, and then you can just slap down Mystic Mine, stall for a few turns, deck them out, well, usually you stall for a push at the moment. Most people are playing an out to Mystic Mind. So stalling for a push is usually what you want to do. But to be fair, Zephyr is unique in that it can search counter traps to just secure the deck out. So people think one duster is enough, but it's not versus Zephyr. So card's insane. Okay, so last on the list, uh, number one is Gamma. This card is nutty for the deck. We will never cut it from the main deck, it's just too good. Even in formats where it's not hitting a lot of decks, it's no longer a turn ender. It's just insane for the deck. It protects you from Ogre, Ash, Droll. Ogre have kind of fallen out of the meta at the moment, but Droll's in the meta. Ogre's in the like previous format with Brave. So Gamma's always huge. If you resolve it on your turn going first, you probably just straight up win that game. You can make Omega, see what they've got in their hand. You can like make Link plays, Sync plays. It's just insane for breaking boards it's a good top deck as well it's not something you have to see in your opening five card hand it's just nutty for the deck it helps remove bodies helps provide beaters we non-ironically do use driver as a level six sometimes and do normal summon it so that's funny definitely the best card in the deck you should be playing it in control zephyr and that's it there were a few cards that we weren't able to mention all the cards I mentioned before are all tech cards for the deck. They're not necessary, but they are very strong cards. They're cards you should consider if you plan on building Zephra. And yeah, thank you for watching. Peace.